Hello, this is Dread from Epic Builds, and in today's video topic, I wanted to go over my recent experience leveling a slam build for Last Epoch in Hardcore SSF. So this one actually starts with a story. So I was talking with a big Path of Exile streamer, and he was trying out some Void Cleave Erasing Strike. And of course, he was having mana problems because everyone who plays Last Epoch starts with the Racing Strike as their first skill seems to have mana problems. So I decided that I thought I'd be nice. And I level this build as an example for what it would look like after like four hours of gameplay. That's what he essentially asked was like, what, what would it look like after four hours? Well, well, let's level a build. And I went from level one all the way to uh, solo abomination, hardcore SSF. It was great. It was a fun stream. But so essentially this is going to be the leveling build for the erasing strike void cleave void knight that i posted a few months ago so if you wanted to play that build you want to play slams and last epoch but we're unsure if you needed like some good uniques if you needed anything like that nope literally start fresh e even in hardcore ssf ready to go uh this video is going to show you how to level the build and how to get it into a serviceable state an end game. So quick TLDR of what we're doing is we are using hammer throw. We use hammer throw a bit and we of course uh, use that until we can get the auto crit node for a racing strike on void cleave. This will allow us to transition into a racing strike and we do that around like level 25 30 usually depending on how fast our void cleave gets set up but up until then Hammer throw with the with the spiral does so much damage and has so much utility that it's just simply the best way of leveling until we can get to that point. And then we swap over to a weapon, bam, instantly was able to do some erasing strike shenanigans because of some of the mechanics that a racing strike has. It allows it to be played an early, early, much earlier time. Now, obviously. I wouldn't suggest playing the Erasing Strike build in Hardcore, not because, like, it's bad or anything, but just because with the mechanics of the build, you could, like, die every so often. It's not, like, the tankiest build ever, especially if you don't have stuff like Ravenous Void and all that. So it's not something I would say to play in SSF Hardcore. I was just doing it to send a message. So with all that being said, if you end up enjoying the video, if you end up playing this build, Leave a like on the video. Tell me down below uh, what your experiences are with Last Epoch so far. I know a lot of new people are coming into Last Epoch because of all the PoE players. So this is going to be kind of a series where I start leveling builds. So you guys have like leveling guides, right? Because you guys are new. You don't know what you're doing. So you want to have the best experience ever. And that's what this, hopefully these videos will do for you. Now, with all that being said, let's get in game, shall I? So I can talk about things in more in depth. All right, here we are in game with the build. This is the Erasing Strike Void Knight. I named it Bonky Boy Charlie, because of course we're bonking. So for the skill rotation for the build overall, we're going to make sure that we have a decent amount of sigils up with the reversal trick, of course. And then we're going to reversal, Racing Strike, uh, void cleaver racing strike and that'll do okay damage now while you're clearing you can do void cleaver racing strike reversal but on single target you can actually swap it up and do reversal then reversal void cleaver racing strike now part of the strength of this build comes from the insane synergy between sigils of hope and all the void damage we get an insane amount of void damage from sigils so you want to have, make sure those are up in boss fights as that's a lot of damage. Now let's show you the whole combo here. So bam, 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 54k. That's pretty respectable for like level 51 in the first few uh, minutes of the build, right? Hours. Uh, we finished all the outcasts and hardcore SSF as you can tell. We're not dead. Res is almost done. 800 life. This is pretty good. 
for overall for a character. Now for leveling, like I said, what I did was I started with hammer throw and then I made sure to grab one point to winged hammers, one point to said fast path, one point to iron spiral, then two points into catapult. And then I made sure to come down and grab at least one point into battle rouse. Uh, if you're not in hardcore, you don't need this node, but if you're in hardcore, you need it. And if you're not in hardcore, you can just grab points into Ballista to minus the mana cost. You can just throw hammer throws and you'll be able to clear all of end game, right? Very easily. And then the second skill you want to spec is Void Cleave. Now what you want to do is when you spec Void Cleave is you want to rush all the way down through here, two points travel here, two, one point travel here, one point travel here, three points travel here, then one point into Obliterator. This makes it so that whenever you hit an enemy with uh, with void cleave you your next uh, erasing strike will crit always and this is really strong because it means that you don't have to run base crit crit chance anything on your erasing strike there are a few caveats to it though uh your echoes including from time loop cannot crit uh will, will not inherit the the crit also your uh like any echoes from the Void Knight itself, like the extra echo, echo chance, will not inherit either. So this is not an echo build. Like this doesn't benefit that much from echoes. So if you want something like that, then this is not the build for you. This is just the big hit build, if that makes sense, right? Now, that's the second skill. And as soon as you're able to run Obliterator, you can delete, uh, you can remove Hammer Throw and then spec into a Racing Strike. And then the first thing I would do is grab five points into Obliteration. This melee void damage is great, and it's doubled with a two-handed weapon. It's great for beginning to scale our damage because we only have, like, so much on our weapon. I only have, like, 26 melee void, which is kind of like Papega, but it works. Then, of course, uh, that spell void damage. Why is that so important? Well, for a racing strike while you're clearing maps, as you can tell, when you kill an enemy or uh, kill an enemy with a racing strike, or of course, a void rift, it will create a void rift. And that void rift, it'll gain the, the base crit, I mean, the crit from void cleave, it'll inherit it for some reason. I don't know why it does that, but it seems to inherit the crit from the void cleave. And that is kind of like an explodey chest per se, and it will propagate through the map. And it's always a hundred percent chance on kill. And this leads to buttery smooth clear. Uh, eventually later on, when you're in end game, you can grab three points and dust of wind, and it makes your AOE into gigantic levels of disgustingness. If you want to see the finished version of this build, I heavily suggest looking at that video down below. Now, of course, after grabbing five points in this, I would heavily suggest grabbing four points in a Merciless so that you can keep your Erasing Strike cooldown low so you can spam it while in your Monolith. It's like bam, bam, every three seconds, bam, bam. As you can tell, this isn't as mana intensive as some of the other builds uh, out there uh, for Erasing Strike. And that's just mainly because we're focusing on just one really, really big hit. And that makes it so we don't have to spend as much mana. Now, of course, uh, then four points into Implements of Destruction, getting the 100% more Void Damage is great. And then eventually just like five points of Easier of Living. And then after that, you can just follow the build guide. Once you get to this point uh, in this level, you can just follow the build guide and it will do everything for you, right? After you get to this point. Now for reversal, of course, two points travel into time sap, one point to time loss vitality, so that it has a decent cooldown. And then of course we grab one point in incipient void rift, one point in terminal void rift, so that we can get the 60% increased damage taken from Harbinger of Dust, because it applies 30% from here and 30% from here. And that's 60% increased damage. That is a lot of extra damage for us, so we definitely want it. And of course, the way this works is when we're in monolith, we go bam 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 and then bam now we don't have mana problems it's that easy now one tip that i want to talk about that a lot of people don't understand is when you are clearing monoliths like imagine if the dummy was an enemy right imagine if the dummy was an enemy a lot of people what they'll do is they'll be like this bam bam and then a, a volatile reversal will push you back instead of pull you forward, which sucks because you don't want to like double back on enemies, right? So what I found to work is when, I, when I'm when i monolith running, I will walk past the mob, like the mobs, 
and I will corral them kind of like in a circle, go backwards, then attack, and then reversal, bam. And then it catapults me forward, and I continue my running. And it means very little backtracking that has to be done. So way more efficient than just doing this. A lot of people complain about the backtracking. Well, if you just kind of think in terms of time, it's not that bad. It's like, look, there you go. Now we're done. You move on, right? It's great. Obviously, if there's loot, you have to double back, but that's not usually a problem. Of course, for sigils, we take four points travel and empowering sigils, one point of last wish. This on kill makes it so that we can essentially have always up on sigils while clearing monoliths, then three points into decree of flame for extra fire damage. It's seven fire damage per sigil, and we'll eventually have four, so that's 28 flat fire damage from our sigils. Then we convert it to void. The reason why this is so insanely strong is because not only does it give you 28 flat to void, it also gives you eventually 30% increased damage per uh, per sigil, then 15% increased damage on sigil on top of that. So that gives us 240% increased damage in total for free early on. This is why you do so much damage early on with this build is thanks to this interaction as you don't need damage on gear. It just damage from your sigils does all the damage for you. So just great. Especially if you're just starting out and then for abyssal echoes, TLDR, uh, two points travel into crippling waves, one point to void supremacy, then two points tra uh, for 80% more damage, two points travel into deep expanse, one point, travel into a vertical explosion, one point in the screaming rifts, and eventually you want to get the armor shred, so you start armor shredding because this build doesn't hit enough to apply armor shred. I explained that in the build guide video a lot more in depth, and same thing with screaming rifts and shrieking echoes. I explained this a lot more in the build guide if you want to see exactly what I'm doing here. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the leveling build. Hopefully you guys learned something. This build was great to level with, it is 100% SSF viable. And as soon as you get an Apathy's Maw, this build will deal with like 300, 400 corruption very easily. And eventually when you get it tanky enough, you can do T4 Jirla. Now, with all that being said, this has been Dread from Epic Builds. Have a wonderful rest of wherever you're at. Bye.